presenting Variety Bandbox. How do you do, everybody? This is Philip Slesser speaking from the stage of the Golders Green Hippodrome, London, presenting the people of Variety to a variety of people. Supporting our artists today, we have, as usual, Billy Turnant's orchestra with the maestro himself, Billy Turnant. <laughs> Opening our program as usual with musical entertainment, we have an old bandbox favourite who has to have a three-ton truck to bring his musical instrument along here to entertain us. It's an electronic organ. The opening number is a novelty piece called Needle Nose and the player of organ grinder swing fame, Robin Richmond. <laughs> Once again, a rather weary-looking character who's rapidly becoming famous on Variety Bandbox shambles onto the stage. 
He's probably a bit tired because he's come all the way from Wagga Wagga, which I need hardly repeat is in Australia. And I've no doubt at all that he's got some more of his usual gloomy forebodings of disaster to pass on to us. So do get ready for a real feast of pessimism from Bill Kerr. For four minutes. <laughs> the reason I'm here tonight is on account of me wife. Again. That's the dame I told you I was handcuffed to. Oh. So she's, she's here tonight, sitting in the audience somewhere. We've, we've just had words. I didn't get to use mine, but... <laughs> you know the cause of divorce? Marriage. <laughs> You'd think it was bad enough for her sitting out here, but... my mother-in-law's with her. <laughs> Frankenstein's daughter. Well, they came along here to make sure that I was here tonight. Uh, now, are you satisfied? You... The old witch. <laughs> I'll tell you something about my mother-in-law. She was on the stage in Australia. She was in a Wild West show. Now, buck jumping and all that. She was one of 16 girls. Of course, they had horses, too, but the horses had better legs than the girls, so they had to get rid of them. Well, I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to have a look at the paper for four minutes. <laughs> um, girls can powder their nose and make themselves at home, but uh, there's nothing much in the paper, is there, eh? <laughs> Getting very thin nowadays, aren't they? By the time you've carried home the fish and chips and laid the table, there's nothing left to read. Isn't there? <laughs> See, the the government is still calling for more and more production. I've got a cobber of mine. He's a burglar. Yeah, he read this more and more business. So we pinched twice as much this year. <laughs> it was no good, though, because when they caught him, the judge had the same idea. He doubled his sentence. <laughs> yeah. Now, this economic crisis is a funny business, isn't it? They, they fill the paper with advertisements telling you to keep on saving. And they have to tax you so hard to pay for the advertisements that you don't have anything left to save. <laughs> then they tell you, we've got to save dollars. So they cut out Virginia Tobacco and they bring over Virginia O'Brien. <laughs> yeah. You know, the more I see of this theatre, the more I like it. All you people sitting out there enjoying yourself. It's really a lovely little theatre now. Take the gallery, for example. <laughs> the way it's built, it's very nice, isn't it? In steps and stairs, pointing down. <laughs> almost perpendicular, you might say. I don't want to worry you, though, but... If some bloke up the back happened to slip, you'd... <laughs> probably start an avalanche. <laughs> uh, 
I was just thinking, though, that it'd be lovely to see you all flying over that <laughs> bottom of the mile. It'd be better than the Grand National, wouldn't it? Huh? <laughs> well, it's no good worrying, is it? I mean, if you're going to go, you're going to go, but... <laughs> I mean, there you are all sitting in closely packed together there. Sitting in with complete strangers. Oh. Have you ever thought that the bloke sitting next to you might have the measles? <laughs> Looks as though me time's up now. It seems as though I've got to be going. I'm sorry if I detained you for any length of time, but I've got to go now. I just thought I'd come on and cheer you up for a bit, so I'll be seeing you. Keep smiling. Bye-bye. <laughs> Romantic duets seem to be particularly popular on this program of ours, and they're going to be provided today by a really delightful pair of singers. Bring us romance in music. Here are Ethel Wilmot and Dennis Catlin. Thank you. 
next artist came to us originally from Holland during the war when he was in the Netherlands Army. It's that really brilliant virtuoso of the harmonica, Max Geldray. Max is going to start by playing a good new number, the Woody Woodpecker song. Now, by the announcement, and certainly my accent, you've noticed I'm not British. I'm from Amsterdam, Holland. And when I was a little boy in Amsterdam, like all little Amsterdam boys, I used to play the mouth organ. And this is what it sounded like. Remember? Yes, we have no bananas. Well, here it is, played as a good old English war. And now, with the same tune, we go to Scotland. Especially for the swing fans, we go to America with Yes, We Have No Bananas played as a boogie woogie. Take it away. Well, to bring down our curtain today, we're going to welcome back to Variety Bandbox a gentleman with a very individual line of comedy who hasn't visited us for quite some time. 
Monty Crick is at the piano as usual to accompany everybody's wicked uncle, Ronald Franco. Thank you. You know, when the summer months are with us, I can laugh at fate. When nature does her best to please, it means a lot to me. I think of England's tree green trees and her sea green sea. But when summertime is over, I'm desolate. Where the tree green tree leaves used to be are autumn tinted fronds. And instead of sea green sea, I think of pond brown ponds. Summer's very nearly over. Just a few more days. See the fields where grows the grain. So down your money plonk and buy a ticket for a train. Or a charabonk. Summertime's no time for cities. Go where cattle graze. If you feel flatter than a bean, you will lose the hump. Just get blown up on the village green by the ancient village pump. When the summer months are with us, I'm most awfully bucked to see cows sitting on the plain many miles from town. Though it means it's going to rain when they are sitting down. When the summer months are with us, blooming blooms I've plucked and rosy fruit I love to see ripening on the land. For through the winter months, like me, they're bottled or they're canned. So get out your fiddle, we're going to make merry do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Sing diddle, dum, diddle, dum, diddle, dum, diddle, and hey, nonny, hey, nonny, no. Sing diddle, dum, diddle, dum, diddle, dum, diddle, and hey, nonny, hey, nonny, yes. <laughs> there we are, well. But the uh, trouble is getting to these places, but then I expect you have all had a trip on a train. Again, again, even again. And you'll know that what happens is terribly true, for it's happened to me and it's happened to you. First, on a time, you resolve to agree. So you look up the trains in an ABC, but the ABC is out of date, the fact that you find out far too late. Then you start packing. Without any doubt, the things that you want, you're sure to leave out. You've forgotten your shirts and ties and socks. Chuck them all in and sit on the box, and what's hanging out, you stick in with a jab, then hastily phone for a taxi cab. You get to the station with time to spare, pay the driver double his fare, inform the porter the time of the train, find out your hurry was all in vain. September's the month, Friday the day, and you looked up a train for a Monday in May. <laughs> of course, you discover you share the call to search for literature on the stall. You buy some papers and books galore, most of which you've read before, and you find a compartment, smoke a third, where the early arrivals all give you the bird. Along comes the porter, proud of his job. You meant to give six minutes of part with a bob. Everybody is saying goodbye. One or two people are trying to cry. Man jumps in the carriage. He's had a close shave, and he fills up the window determined to wave. A flag is waggled, a whistle is blown. The train moves off with a terrible groan. Chinks and clangs at its various joints, bumps and trembles across the points. Gathers up speed with monotonous purr. A da 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 the bloke who's waving has made you frown by closing the window, which ought to be down, and a woman opposite's giving her son some plums and an orange, some sweets and a bun, while her husband has lit up a pipe, if you please, apparently filled with a ration of cheese. <laughs> on your left is that crossword puzzling chap with most of his newspaper on your lap. You can't read at all, though you vainly try, so you watch the scenery passing by. The scenery Britain proudly boasts, miles and miles of telegraph posts, advertisement boards in all the fields which tell of the stuff that the cattle yields. But somehow either you're not in a mood to think of a soup or a patent food. In fact, you're not feeling quite up to par. A da 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 Your head starts nodding, it won't behave. Your collar is hurting the part you shave. And away you go to the land of nod till your next-door neighbour gives you a prod. You gaze at him blankly, you dare not speak, for you find you'll be nesting against his cheek. Along comes a steward who looks at the bunch and says with a sniff, Any air for lunch? You take a ticket for what you care. Surely the luncheon car's better than here. Off you lurch from side to side. With any old thing that you can, you collide. For hours, as it seems, your way you win, but the restaurant car's at the opposite end. Retrace your steps, your face is afar, and lunch is the very last thing you desire, but you sit down, have it, sausage or fish, vegetables in an enormous dish, mashed together, boiled or fried, plonked on the table and left by your side. <laughs> Coffee is extra, terrible test, but you've got so far, so you'll face the rest. You look at the liquid, give it a sip, pay the bill quickly for getting to tip, nor notice, notice the waiter's offended, la, and nobody sees you for a quarter of an hour. 
When you do reappear, you're white in the face, you totter along and find your place. Into your seat you painfully drop and wish that the horrible train would stop. You'd stop it yourself if you had any grounds. You can't afford penalties at five pounds. Oh, how awful these journeys are. Da 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 Last you arrive and your brow is wet and you're dirty, untidy and hate to be met, which you are by your host who looks healthy and brown, hopes that you've had a nice journey from town. You'll make a long stay. You feel very ill, so quickly reply that you certainly will. I expect you've all had a trip on the train again and again and again and again. That is the reason you bought a car. Da 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 da. <laughs> all change. Box for today, and this is Philip Slesser saying goodbye for now. The program, which came from the Golders Green Hippodrome, London, was produced by Joy Russell Smith and presented by the BBC.